guys, Patriot with you tonight. It's a beautiful afternoon in the Arizona desert. I'll show you the scenery later. It's just gorgeous out here in this place that I'm at. Kind of away from it all right now. But I came out here to uh, uh, talk about primary tools or UPTs, urban primary tools. And uh, a lot of the time people think I'm automatically talking about the, uh, the multiplier. Um, well, that's not quite what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a, uh, a primary tool in an urban situation uh, that has a lot more power and impact uh, than this uh, because we're talking about uh, a demolition factor that of course this doesn't have. Many of you carry a large survival knife in your urban kit. This is a cold steel trail master. I carry this one a lot. It's been a good knife over the years. I really respect this knife but at about a pound in weight it just doesn't have the mass or the crushing force uh, that's necessary uh, when dealing with real heavy stuff, urban structures, drywall, uh, hinges, doors, two by fours, that kind of thing where you might have to lift, pry, crush your way in or out of a structure. Whether it's in an emergency situation, uh, a, you know, some kind of a disaster, an earthquake, a tornado, hurricane, or maybe it's a situation of uh, riot or uh, without rule of law. So what kind of a tool are we talking about that goes beyond the capability of this but keeps us out of that area of the rescue tool? You know, uh, the Halligan bar or hooligan bar is, is, a, is a great tool. The fire, firefighters and rescue crew use them all the time and they're uh, really an outstanding tool. But many of those things weigh between 8 and 12 pounds for just the standard size, you know, a 30 inch to 48 inch bar. And it's just not practical for uh, Joe civilian that's out there with a, a backpack on who might find himself in a, a rescue situation. You know, just uh, last week on television, I saw these tornado chasers. I guess there's several programs now, but uh, the, the one that I was watching, uh, a tornado had just come through and they were the first people on the scene. Uh, there was no emergency crews there. It was just the people uh, that had just had the tornado pass over. Uh, everyone was completely out of it mentally. They were shell-shocked and here comes the tornado chasers and they were essentially the first rescue people on the scene. Uh, unfortunately, they were a bit ill-equipped. They didn't have even basic tools and they were trying to push in doors with their bare hands. Uh, I thought it was kind of uh, odd. I, you know, maybe, maybe this will cause them to think about that. In any case, when we escalate beyond just a, a good survival knife, I don't even carry this one in my EDC pack typically. Uh, I carry this one quite often. This is the uh, Recon Tonto. Uh, and something that I used to carry with me all the time in my truck was this right here. This is made by Max Tools. Uh, it's a half an inch uh, breaker bar essentially with a real real slight upsweep at the end here. Doesn't afford you much prying force. I used this when I was a mechanics apprentice working on cars. And uh, I've still got it to this day. I've never cracked it or hurt it. It is made by Max Tools Company. And you can see that bend here on the end. Uh, this is really good for getting into tight, narrow places where you have to apply a moderate prying force. This is good for moving starters or uh, aligning uh, components in order to uh, relieve the tension on a belt tensioner to put the belt back on. That sort of thing is real handy for aligning transmissions uh, so that you can uh, get, them, get the mounts back in. Um, I thought that it was a, a pretty good uh, rescue tool or survival tool uh, to have in my truck and uh, years ago I, I didn't really have anything else. I uh, didn't put that much thought into it but I figured it would be better than nothing. Well it certainly is. Limitations on this thing, it just doesn't have much curve over here so it's not going to be able to apply much of a leveraging or lifting force because it doesn't have much lift here. Uh, the uh, the half inch bar is okay, but uh, I can flex that bar pretty good when, when I've got some torque on it. The other thing, this weighs slightly less than two pounds, or right about two pounds. So it just doesn't have a lot of impact force. If I was to have to uh, imp swing it to impact something, it doesn't have a lot of mass. Uh, yeah, it's gonna it's got more mass than a a cold steel trail master, and a lot more reach and a lot more leveraging force. But uh, at some point. We have to decide if we're willing to carry something a little bit bigger to get a little bit extra capability. Next on the list here, guys, is the classic 24-inch 
crowbar, gooseneck crowbar, or wrecking bar, or demolition bar, I mean, known by many names. It's affectionately known as a zombie beater or a half-life multi-tool. And if you don't know what half-life is, you might have to Google that one. You can see this one's got quite a sweep on it with this gooseneck, and even this end has a lot more angle than that pry bar that I showed you before. Um, also, instead of a, a half-inch thick, this one's about five-eighths thick, and it is uh, hexagon-shaped. So we've got it's a six-sided tool. This is a huge upgrade from the pry bar that I had before. A little bit shorter, but uh, a lot more capable. Uh, I can apply a lot of force on this without it bending or flexing. And because of this, this angle here, if I put this under something and go down to level or horizontal, I get a lot more lift than I had with the pry bar. This is a really nice tool. Uh, get the bugs coming out to get me. And they're biting. I do have some, uh, some uh, bug repellent I can put on, but uh, I guess I'm not to that stage yet. Now we go up a pound with this tool. We're up to about uh, three pounds, or 2.95 pounds to be exact. I, I weighed this. And uh, we've got a bit more capability. Uh, if we're swinging with this end, it's, uh, it, it works much better as a wrecking bar. Uh, this pointed gooseneck or chisel side will go through material. It'll puncture through. Once it's through material, you can actually pry it outwards pry it outwards and up. Uh, and, and it just has a lot more mass. Now a pound may not seem like much, but when you extend it out here on the end of a, lar uh, a lever like that, where most of the weight is kind of out here at the end, uh, it's, it's a pretty capable tool. It does have a chisel on this end. It's really good for scraping or poking through material this way. And this end has a nail puller. One of the problems with this uh, gooseneck crowbar is that you'll see it goes past 90 degrees. So it actually, you know, goes past the 90 degree point and comes back up this direction. So if I move up to hook something with this end, I can only get so close to a wall or a vertical structure before I can't get there anymore. So I have to hope that whatever I'm trying to get underneath is high enough that it allows me to clear a vertical structure this way. Um, this is a classic style. If you can get it under something, it provides a lot of lift, about three inches or so. But uh, there are some there are some downsides to this design. Hey, all around, this is a great deal. It's at three pounds, five eighths of an inch thick. I've, it's kind of the perfect balance. Uh, I found some thicker ones at three quarter, but frankly, they're just a bit too heavy in a 24 inch length. All right, guys, on to the next tool here. This next one. It's a little bit smaller. We go back down and weight a little bit to uh, 1.8 pounds. This is a 17 inch ripping chisel and we've got a 90 degree nail puller on this end and we've got a ripping chisel on this end. It's 17 inches. It's a lot shorter. It's a lot more portable. So uh, those of you who are real weight conscious might consider something like this. It gives you a fair amount of bashing force, especially with this this 90 degree uh, chiseled in, or this 90 degree nail puller here. It allows you to get right up next to an object because it's not past the 90 degree like the crowbar is. And you can apply a pretty good amount of lifting force this way. It gives you about two inches of lift, so that's pretty good. All in all, I think this is a really nice tool, but since we went down in size, it might be for some people, it might give you a little bit more capability than any other tool that you might be carrying right now. But uh, for me, I, I'm looking for a little bit more. I'm willing to deal with a little bit of extra weight in order to get more capability. If I'm going to carry something, it, this is going to be fine for breaking glass. Uh, you've got some limited effect on drywall. You could actually punch through it this way, make a perforated outline in a wall, and then uh, bash it out with either this side or maybe even kick it through with your foot. Uh, so, it, I think this is good for dealing with small things, but you're kind of limited on the amount of leveraging action that it has with a 17-inch bar. I, I think I'm going to go to something heavier. Okay, guys, next on my list is the Stanley Fat Max Extreme 4.5-pound demolition hammer. Now, this thing's quite a tool. Uh, I'm impressed with this. I'll show you the, 
writing on it there, the stamping, Fat Max Extreme. You can see it's uh, got a rubberized handle on it. It's 18 inches long. This incorporates a rather substantial hammer. It's real beefy. A board bender. A splitter. A ripping chisel and two nail pullers. Uh, you've got one on the outside and one on the inside. This one will hook in from this direction and you pry up on this side to pull it. This one you'll use from this direction and pry down to lift a nail that way. Now this thing's, uh, this thing's beefy. This is quite, quite the tool. I'm really impressed with this. It gives you a lot more capability than the pry bars that we looked at, the ripping chisel or the, the uh, crowbar. Uh, it's bright yellow, so as a rescue tool, that's kind of cool. Uh, somebody who was uh, chasing tornadoes or uh, lived in a, uh, an area with earthquakes, this might be something to consider. This one's most capable as far as uh, an impact tool goes. Uh, if I swing this, I've got a lot of weight behind that sucker. Four and a half pounds total tool weight, and this one will actually uh, crush uh, concrete, drywall, hollow doors, uh, and a whole mix of other uh, structures common structures to urban uh, environment. This end here, a person could even modify or sharpen a little bit in order to make a, a wood splitter. If you come down on top of a 2x4 with this splitting surface here, this acts as a wedge and will splinter the 2x4. Uh, uh, you can also lift up 2x4 by hooking it here or a 2x6 and apply it leveraging force here. So uh, it gives you some different ways to grab or twist uh, wood structures out of the way. Uh, as a swinging tool, for me, it works better with the, uh, the splitting end out this way. The reason for that is because it's a two-handed tool for me. Uh, if I hold it this way, you can see that my hand lines up there, and it's pretty, it's pretty natural to swing this, this way. If I turn it the other way, hammer end, then you see my bottom wrist here, down here, uh, is kind of turned towards the outside and that's not as comfortable. It's much more comfortable to have it turned on the inside like this. So if I'm gonna use it as a right-handed hammer, it's a little bit of a compromise there, but not terrible. What I can do is choke up a little bit here and swing it this way. All in all, I'm, I'm very impressed with this tool. Uh, I haven't used it much. I've uh, knocked around some uh, wood planks with it and some two by fours. Uh, later, I'll be doing some concrete and some drywall. I'm not going to be able to test all these tools on camera for you, it's just too time consuming, but uh, I'll probably test the, my two favorites. Now these things only go for about $30, well below the price of a good pocket folder, or a tactical folder. Most people are carrying you know, a $75 folder, this is half that price. Four and a half pounds, it's right up there at the max limit for me for an urban primary tool, but uh, if, uh, if you don't mind the extra weight, it's very capable. Something to consider. I think you'll be impressed when you see this one in tests.